I am Denisha Fraser, Master Teacher of Business Education in Jamaica. All right, so this morning to talk to you about Google Classroom, I want to first give you a little background about what Google Classroom is. And Google Classroom is a free um, learning management system. It is good for collaboration. Um, it brings life to the classroom, very easy to use. You know, it's, it's a system on which you can create classes, create quiz, distribute assignments, send feedback to your learners and facilitate discussions. And so we're going to talk about Google Classroom. Here we go. One of the first things that is required um, to use Google, Cl Google Classroom effectively is to have a Gmail account. And so if you don't have that, it would be good to set that up right now. All right, so I, um, I'll move straight into Google Classroom. Now, in my browser, I'm going to type Google Classroom and I'll hit search. Now, it's right here, Google Classroom, um, classroom.google.com. For me, I have already started using Google Classroom, so when I hit um, hit search it will bring me straight into my classroom but i want to show you what it will look like when you do go there for the first time you will see a page that resembles this one that says get started and that's where you'd sign up sign up so i hit google classroom since i have already been using it and it brings me straight into my classroom now in here is a dashboard that shows me all the classes that I have created in this space. And you can see that right up there. All right, so over here on the left-hand side, you, you'll see um, you have this menu and I'll choose classes. It brings me to the dashboard. Um, I could, right now I'm going to create, I'm gonna show you how to create a class. All right, so over here on the right hand side, you see that plus sign, I'm clicking on it. Now, this on the students, from the students end, they will see join, they would see join a class. But um, on our end, as the educators, you'd see you join a class or create a class. And so we're about to create a class. We'll just select here and move right along. This class, I'm going to call it, um, let's say, online special. <laughs> All right, and it is integrated studies, integrated studies. It's just been created for this tutorial. Um, sorry, let me put that in the subject section integrated studies now there's no hard and fast about what you want to name this section these sections but the first section called um class name you would want to use the class name or the subject that you so that you can easily identify or recognize your classroom once you get into this space all right and so we'll create this class i press the create button The class is being created. All right, so now that the class has been created, we have here the class online special. And there's something very important here is the class code. And this code is particularly important because the learners will need this code in order to be a part of your class. So it will be very necessary for you to re record this, write this down, or copy and send to your learners. This is just one way um, in which they can join your class. There is another way I'll show you a little later on, but this code is very important. If your learner will join your class, class if you allow them to join, um, then you will have to provide them with this code so that they can join your class. You also have the option here in this section here, follow my mouse, my cursor, sorry, and you can select a theme from those presented. You see there are general themes. There is English and history, math and science, 
um, art. So you could select a theme that is appropriate to your the subject that you're offering. And once you've done that, you say select class theme. That's optional as well, though. Right? It also allows you the privilege to upload um, photo. All right. You want to you want to also you want to also have a welcome message so that when persons enter the class for the first time they'll see that you know welcome to our classroom right <laughs> and you could just post that so that the learners once they join the class they will see this when they enter all right <coughs> Now we are going to progress into, and that was the first area. This is the stream menu. And for the stream menu, you will see in this section, once you have you know, posted assignments and so on, everything will appear in the stream, quite like your um, social media um, timeline. Let's look at the next tab, which is your classwork. And that's where you'll spend most of your time um, creating classwork for your, for your learners. And so you have the create tab, the create plus sign here. So we'll click on it and we'll see assignments, quiz, assignment, questions, material, reuse, post, topic. All right, so we're going to explore assignment. Now this can be used um, to give assignments to your learners and when they enter the Google Classroom they will access. Now I prefer to create the assignments and so on so before the learners join the class so that when they come to the class it's not empty and they will have things that they can do um, once they have entered the class. This assignment we are going to, um, let's see, we can call this one. We're going to call it uh, letter writing. Letter writing. The instructions will be uh, view the PowerPoint below and create a letterhead for the paint shop. Now, I would have gone ahead <clears throat> and created a PowerPoint with information on um, a particular company and no I'd require my learners to create their own, um, no, I would have created, provided information, sorry, on a particular company and I would provide also instructions in a PowerPoint that I'll attach here and they will have to access the PowerPoint in order to create their letterhead for the business. And so you would have to do some prep work before you get to this stage. Um, my basic prep work for this task is to create, an create a PowerPoint beforehand that I will now attach using that icon add at the lower left hand corner as you just saw me selecting just now. All right, so my company is the paint shop and I open up and the file comes here, the paint shop, and I just click upload. And it's now there. So my learners would see all of this when they enter. Over on the right hand side, it's asking me about how the points. So for this task, since it's a letterhead, I'll give them 10 points for it. And when is it due? Um, due dates, they are optional, but I recommend them because when you have a due date, the learners will um, when they access their Google Classroom, the Google Classroom, sorry, from their screen, they will see what is upcoming. And so it will help them to stay on track with um, their assignments. So I'll select a due date, say the 28th. And I could select a time, but that's optional. Topic. The topic section is very important because when you create a topic, what it does on the stream, which was a tab we were in just now, the menu we were in before, um, uh, when you create a topic, the on the stream, everything relating to that topic would be organized together. So I'll create a topic here and I'll call it writing task. And you could add a rubric here if you want the learners to see how the points will be broken down. 
and so we'll simply assign the task now you're assigning the task and which whatever time a learner joins the classroom they'll still see the task so you don't have to repost the task for them it's always going to be there as long as you leave it there All right and so that's how you create a task i just want to create another task to show you well i could yeah create let's go i could create that was an assignment i created just now i could create a question and yes so let me show you that so that we can see how we use the, reuse our topic this question is on let's say business letters and the question the question is what is a business letter the instructions here instructions here would be um, record your answer below sorry below and over on this side I just want to give like two points for this and a due date is always important as I said it helps the learner to know what's coming up next and so I'm going to say the 23rd click away from it and it selects the date it's asking you what topic and that's important I want to show you that the topic that, I, that we created just now it's still there right so see right in task so on in the stream those two two tasks are going to be one beneath the other right and it's asking students can reply to each other students can edit answer and I want to allow both and when you click ask it goes straight to the stream I'm going to show you that on the stream so back to the stream here and you would see that they're both there um, letter writing yes and in the classwork section writing task business letter letter writing awesome back to create and we want to look at material now in material this is where you can create as it were a course and you can add um, a bunch of videos that you want the learners to to, to watch you could you could attach as you're seeing the attachment you could attach something from your Google Drive here um, say you have a topic that say you have a topic that you want learners to navigate on their own but you have information in the Google Drive that you want to put there you can do that you have links the websites you want them to um, go to you have um, a file that you have um, put some notes together that you want them to read you can click on any of those YouTube and let me just show you how the YouTube one works you could click on YouTube you could search for a video um, in YouTube sorry letter writing and you could search and you know beforehand you would have searched and you would have known the one you wanted to use say I wanted to use this one and I would just add it and it would be there I could add something a link from a website as I said a file say I wanted to add a file from my computer I could add a file and my learners would be able to access same so yeah. so I could add a file from my computer um, upload and all the things like all the materials you want them to move through you want them to go through for this would be right here as I said a link from a website could work Google Drive that you want to attach here could work as well you would put your title of this um, thing this particular set of material and it, it it probably is about letter writing again since that's what we're looking at and you would describe or explain to the learner you know what you want them to do first second third and so on and they would maneuver um they would go through this material and once you're through you just post and that's basically um, you also have the option of creating like a multiple choice um, quiz um, quiz assignment here you could do multiple choice here um, you'd start with your blank well I could put in a title um, again we're doing letter writing so I could create a quiz for them 
give them instructions here. Um, I could say answer all questions, right? And I could go to the blank form and this is the blank form. This is where you create like your multiple choice items or items for short answers. Um, and the learners could respond here for you. Um, the question, you have the question section and um, this is where you would type your question if you're using the multiple choice. So we have multiple choice, we have paragraphs, we have short answer. So I could, I could create an assignment, say for example, a short answer, and I could say, uh, write, uh, write a short, so write a short, um, business letter and I could put in in brackets no more than 50 words right and I could put my um, <clears throat> so the students would be able to respond here um, and I would be able to you know once I've entered the, the required information, um, right? So I could post this as the task. So once I close out of this, this would be saved for my learners. And I just assign the, the task. Oh, I didn't put in my points. Say this one could be worth mm, 20 points. I would have to enter a due date again, probably the 29th. Click away. The topic, it's still under writing task. And I could put my rubric here if I wanted. And I would just assign. Good. And so, again, I'm telling you in the classroom section, all the writing task um, related things would be under one section. Right, the people stream, people section, sorry, where you have the teacher and you have the student. And this is where you, the second way you could add your students, as I was saying. The first way was to send them the code. The second way is to add them by entering their email address in this section. But this would require the teacher to use a considerable amount of time to add their emails here. So that's another way. You could also add an assistant teacher who would have all the privileges that you have by clicking on this option here and enter the teacher's email address and they would have access to the classroom just as you do. Right? That's a people section. Now I want to show you how the mark book looks. I'll go to another class that I already have here. And the people tab. Right, and so this is what you would see once your learners are added. Their names would be listed in this section here, right? Okay, going to the Marks tab. There's not much to show you over the People tab. And you'd see all the assignments that they've ever been given as well as their grades. I'll just click on one of these. It shows you what's missing, what has been submitted, etc. So I'll just click on the assignment called letter with table, which is something that my learners would have been assigned. And it tells me, as you're seeing here, it tells me who would have submitted, whose work is missing. And you're seeing all of those there. As I'm scrolling, you're seeing on this section. It's also telling me how many um, have not submitted the assignment. That's what assigned means. It's assigned but not done by the learner. And I would have marked 40 of those already, but I still have one person who handed in who I have not yet marked for. So I would have to access this one. It seems this learner did not um, did, did not submit. Just click the hand in and did not submit. So I'll go to somebody else who would have submitted before. And would I, I would have marked for so I can demonstrate to you how you do the marking. So when you select the work, it comes up in this section 
over on the right hand side I'm selecting what I want to see and it comes in this blank section here right and I need to provide feedback to my learner I would have already um, entered a score for this one but I could click on this plus sign here highlight this section highlight this section Right, it's taking a little breath and then I click on the plus sign and I say um, logo is missing this is letterhead needs a logo and I comment and I could highlight another section here to say um, and add another note and say um, I could say address is missing okay? and I could do that you could do that going all the way down so that the learner would have appropriate feedback once they have received this piece and I would grade them I could leave the student a note uh, of what they need to do um, adjustments they need to do and just so that you can see how I use the return option let me just change the score temporarily and once the score is entered you see this says not returned and I can return to my learner who would receive the feedback and who would be able to update their work and return it to me that's if you want them to return it for a second marking all right and so we go back to our classroom and we go back to our main page there's a calendar here um, that you could you could view and on the calendar it tells you what's what's coming up what when our pieces do and so on right over on this right hand side you see the Google Apps and in here it shows you all the apps available for your use in the Google Classroom all right and so that's a basic tour of the Google Classroom I just want to do a quick recap of what we would have just covered all right so I recommended that you have a Gmail account to use Google Classroom you go and you sign up for your Google Classroom by searching for Google Classroom in the browser and choosing the option sign up you start you create your classes by choosing a name for your class adding images an image sorry and a subject then you have to you want to create a welcome message for your learner so that when they enter the classroom for the first time they will see that welcome message you want to create a po create a post in the form of an assignment or a question that the learners will have a task to do once they enter the classroom you want to add people to your classes um, there are two ways to do it you could add your learners by sending them the the code for the class or you could add them manually by entering their email addresses um, and you'd want to monitor your assignments in the mark section to track the progress of learners who, who are the persons submitting and who are the persons who are not submitting you will grade the assignment as I showed you in the appropriate window and offer your learners feedback and allow them an opportunity to do adjustments if that's something that you want to do frequently asked questions is Google Classroom um, should be good for my context so um, you might want to know is Google Classroom good good for your context and I would say everybody would have to will have to look at their context and see you know I have shown you what it can do and you need to look at your context to see you know if it's appropriate I would not be able to answer that question for you because you know the learners that you have might be different from my learners they might be younger they might be older so you would know um, does it require a lot of data I have not been getting any complaints from my learners and they are buying data almost day by day and so I find that it's it uses reasonable the data usage is reasonable and it doesn't seem to be using a lot of data for them to upload assignments or to download instructions will my learners find it difficult I have not been getting any any um, complaints learners occasionally have questions other learners assist and I also try to um, assist as best as I can and so it is important as um, instructors to also 
view the tutorials um, on what the on the learners section of the Google Classroom to be able to instruct them appropriately. And um, where can I get additional support for using Google Classroom? I would say there are tons of YouTube videos out there that you can access. You could also um, so you can get additional support on YouTube. And also you can inbox me at Teach Free on Facebook or on Instagram. And once again, I just want to say thanks for watching and look out for other videos on um, other tools you can use with your learners. Bye-bye.